Okay, a circuit board, uh, obviously, uh, the black bits are integrated circuits. Uh, if you were to uh, de-encapsulate all these little black bits, you'd end up with the silicon dyes that are inside. And that on itself is actually a fairly interesting exercise sometimes. You can see all sorts of neat things about them. Uh, for example, one of the dyes was a microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, you can verify uh, common things like the manufacturer's uh, logo, uh, the part number, of course. And uh, on some of the metal sized top structures, you can see some really neat things that are basically RF engineering. And uh, that's all very clever uh, and a commonly done thing uh, in industry uh, and uh, kind of amusing to do as a hobby. Uh, if uh, you eventually do this enough, you'll start seeing a lot of integrated circuits with this kind of uh, metalization pattern on the top. We're always looking at the topmost layer of an ASIC and that's always the metal. And uh, this metalization is often put in place to obscure details below. Uh, whether that be for security reasons or just to make it a little more difficult to reverse engineer uh, or there's actually some practical uh, technical considerations there uh, anyways a uh, very thin layer of metal but a micron thick uh, but unless it's removed of course you can't see what's below uh, i've always wondered whether or not you could actually scrub this layer off uh, in a home workshop uh, in a previous video i was uh, looking at a uh, very crooked heat sink and uh, i needed to flatten it and uh, I was using a technique called lapping, which is simply just grinding off a surface very flat. Um, and that was something in sort of the sub-millimeter uh, sort of flatness spec that I needed there. And that works fine. It's very commonly done with metalworking. Nothing too exciting. Um, basically, I was wondering if I can use the exact same technique, but on a very much smaller scale. About a thousand times, actually, smaller scale. And uh, if I could lap off the top micron of metal off a silicon die. So, uh, what you're looking at is some... Uh, wax uh, paraffin in fact it's used for sealing the tops of canning uh, jars when you do some home canning making jams and such not uh, it's a neat little substance because it has a good uh, low boiling point and uh, easy to handle uh, i needed something to hold these silicon dies are extremely small and i was wondering if i could encapsulate them in a, a little bit of wax as a holder so that's what that chunk of uh, paraffin is all about in that photo i uh, threw it into a flask and melted it down a little bit uh, then I needed to basically uh, build a little mold, and I sort of uh, dumped out the contents here of my plumbing drawer, and I found a brass union fitting, uh, just because it's nice and small and rectangular, and it seems to have a nice flat surface on it. Uh, put the die down, uh, upside down, and of course put the little fitting around it, and then I poured the wax around uh, the die, and uh, that of course allows me to handle it, and you can see it's now cooled a bit. Uh, the surface on the top has sort of a, a muffin shape. I'll get back to that in a second here. Uh, that turned out to be fairly important. But if I just flip it over, uh, you can see now the die appears to be held fairly flat against the uh, wax. And of course, you can easily hold about a centimeter uh, diameter device uh, easily enough. So I uh, went over to uh, my flat surface plate, uh, took a, a, a glass slide from a microscope kit. Uh, basically, a glass can be very flat. Uh, that yellow base is uh, basically a, a polishing compound, diamond polishing compound I use to uh, keep my uh, chisels for woodworking nice and sharp. Very, very gently, very um, very uh, modest amounts of pressure, which is removing an incredibly small amount of material. And if you flip it over, uh, here's the microphotograph. And of course, uh, it looks like I've chewed through basically all the layers at a slightly different rate. So it's kind of my first success in a sense I can now count the number of layers in a, a silicon die. Now if you flip the uh, little holder over, you can see that essentially the wax, when it cooled, it didn't cool flat, I poured it flat. But for some reason paraffin always makes this little sort of edges like this, and uh, it seems to correlate with the, the grind patterns on the other side. Uh, so it's kind of amazing, we're totally talking about microns between those layers, so uh, this die was flexing an incredibly small amount. Uh, unfortunately enough though to keep you from polishing off uh, one layer at a time, so promising, but not quite. Uh, next step, I uh, took a, a piece of solid aluminum uh, rod and I took a, a, a union fitting, from, uh, again from plumbing, uh, but they seem to slide, in, slide into each other very, very precisely. The concept here is that a little aluminum slug will actually be used to uh, press down on the wax uh, mold very precisely. So I uh, cut a chunk off the rod and then I lapped the ends of that uh, to make them very precise and flat. I uh, tried it again, put down the uh, little copper fitting there, put the die upside down, different die this time now, uh, and poured it in some wax and uh, let it cool. Uh, again, it had this sort of funny muffin top shape, but this time I, uh, I carefully uh, cut that wax in half 
and I cut it nice and straight with a hot uh, knife. Uh, and then I used the aluminum slug to press down very precisely and uh, tried lapping it again. And uh, I ended up, of course, with uh, another polished die and I'll just inset that. And you can see it's canting slightly, basically. I'm starting to polish off one end of the die, uh, but the die definitely isn't perfectly straight. Well, there you go. That was kind of interesting. Uh, you can certainly grind a silicon die down into the micron level uh, using some incredibly uh, modest bits of technology there. Um, now, I wasn't able to hold the coplanarity of the die, so I can't grind off a layer by layer, it looks like. So, uh, this doesn't look like the right approach, and uh, I'm not sure what it is to hold that. But uh, it was certainly a bit of fun here this weekend, uh, just seeing what you could do with some uh, pretty basic tools.